Okay, as we start off here, we're looking at a blank canvas and I'm gonna maximize the size of my canvas here and go ahead and hide the data panel. Uh, there's, there's nothing has happened in history yet. We're gonna start the process of modeling uh, this, this simple little component. Generally speaking, we're gonna start with a sketch. Sketches are 2D and we'll use that 2D geometry to start to form 3D geometry. That's usually the way um, 3D modeling starts. So we're gonna start from the, the solid uh, tab. We'll select a sketch. When I select a sketch, sketch, sketches are predominantly 2D geometry. So I need to find a way of saying, in this 3D space, where am I going to start creating my 2D geometry? I like to think of it as saying, if I'm gonna draw something with a pencil, I don't draw it around in the air. I, I pick up a piece of paper to draw on. And for our first sketch, we're really limited to the three primary planes, and they're showing here in orange, what, what plane do I wanna draw on? I'm gonna draw on the plane um, here that's got the, the blue arrow pointing away from it. Blue is always going to be our Z axis or Z axis. Um, and that, that we'll find out later on a CNC machine, the Z axis is the axis that the uh, tool is gonna to come from. Not necessary to use this, but it's, it's a good way to, to start. So I've started a sketch. I now see a set of tools that are relative to a sketch. I can see this point. That's the origin. That's the center of my uh, 3D world, if you will. I'll, I'll start by creating a rectangle. So I've just selected the rectangle command. I like to use a center rectangle when I'm starting because that allows me to center my component around the origin. And you'll find out later that having the component centered helps us build our other features off of it. I like to say when you're using 3D modeling, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, you, you really want to have a solid foundation to build off of. And when that origin is at the center of your part, it, it becomes a very useful foundation, especially when there's symmetry to your part. So I'm being prompted by the, for length and width dimensions. Um, my width is one and a quarter inches. Um, and my other dimension is 1.875, that's 7 eighths of an inch. You could type it in fractions or decimal. I'm gonna type in 1.875, and that will uh, create my sketch. Now, this sketch is black, uh, which means it's fully defined. Uh, later, we're gonna see some underdefined sketches, but we do want our sketches to be fully defined. I'm glad I started this one out fully defined. Okay, so we've got a 2D bit of geometry. We're gonna go ahead and extrude it into some 3D geometry. So I'm gonna to go to the solid tab. I'll use extrude. Uh, we can select on that geometry. I'm just gonna rotate around so we can see it. And we can start to give this depth. Extrude is like pushing that shape a given distance. In this case, my given distance is three quarters of an inch. So I'll just type 0.75 and hit enter. And I now have a block. Uh, that's the starting point for my uh, for my sketch or for my for my component. Uh, next, I think I'm going to start putting the holes through the top, that big that big and small bore. Uh, to do that, I can now sketch on any face I want. So I can I can create a sketch, and I can not only select those orange planes, but I can select the flat geometry that I've created from the solid. So I'll pick that top face, and I'm going to go ahead and create a, a circle. Now in Instead of putting the circle on the origin, I'm gonna do it wrong this time because I, I told you I wanted to explain to you the difference between blue and black geometry. Um, so I'm gonna come out and uh, draw this circle just a random size. I didn't set a dimension either. And this is all blue. And what blue means it's underdefined. It means it can float around in space. It's not locked into, into space yet. And it's not locked in in size yet. The first thing we could do is come and drag and snap it onto the origin and that locked it into a location, but it still hasn't locked in a size. So the next thing we're gonna do is lock in a size, but we've told it we want it snapped on that origin. That's useful because later if we change the size of our block, it's always gonna stay centered. And um, this is important right when we do our, um, our intent. So to add a dimension, I can hit the dimension command or I can just hit D. I use D because keyboard shortcuts are better. I'll click to drop my dimension and I can set that dimension to 875. We can use the same extrude command to give it depth. So we're just gonna go ahead and uh, use that extrude command and cut down in. And in this case, this pocket is uh, a quarter of an inch, uh, not up, but down, so negative and okay. So we've got a, we've got a hole cut into it now. 
The next hole is going to be concentric on the first hole. Uh, again, I'm going to make a mistake when I draw it just because I think it's helpful to teach some concepts. I will set the size right. So I've entered the size. That's correct. But its location isn't correct. I could drop it on that origin. Um, but I'm also going to show you how you create sketch relations. This is how to relate two pieces of geometry to each other. Uh, I would like to make two circles concentric to each other. So I can pick the concentric circle I already did and my new circle. And now I've said those are two concentric. They're on top of each other. And again, as things change, uh, they're always going to stay concentric to each other. Okay, we're going to go ahead and give that some depth and cut that in. Instead of giving it some arbitrary depth for the extent type over here, how far do I want it to go? I'm going to say I want it to go through everything. And, and again, the reason is if I were to go back in time and change some of my initial inputs, make that block taller, the hole will always go through the middle. And if I were to make the uh, make the block wider, it would always stay centered. So we always want to be thinking about how we're capturing our intent of our design so it updates how we would like it to update. All right, there's, there's a hole that's going to come down on this face and a hole through this side face. Uh, we actually have a hole command that works well, especially when we know that we're creating a clearance hole for something. Uh, in this case, it is a clearance hole for a bolt. So I'll use the hole command and I'll just drop where I want that hole to go. And what I can do here uh, is say, well, it's going to be a, a clearance hole. Uh, for a specific bolt, uh, I can pick that it's a ANSI style bolt and it's a machine screw that's a number 10 machine screw. So, so that set all the dimensions correct. If I just pick my edges, I can set how far away from the edge it's going to be. Uh, in this case, it's 3 16 or 0.1875. I'll do that by typing point uh, or 3 divided by 16. So we can enter some math in there. And it's also 3 divided by 16 away from the other edge. There we go. Uh, same kind of trick uh, for the depth. We want it to go through everything. So if this block ever changes sizes, uh, it will always go through everything. Another hole down over here. Uh, neat little trick. If I hold my mouse right click mouse down and just slide up, it's going to repeat the last command I did. So it's up and now I'm in the hole command already. Uh, that's, that's quite a bit easier. From this edge, 3 divided by 16. And from this edge, 3 divided by 16. And again, we want that hole to go through everything. OK, we're starting to build up a set of features. We saw that timeline played before, and I'm seeing that timeline played again as I'm, as I'm building through the process. I think the next thing I'm going to do is add the, the little slot uh, that curved slot on the front here. So I'll create a sketch on the front. There's a pretty easy way to create that slot command. Um, and I'm going to do that using, well, I gave it away, a slot command. So always look for this geometry. If it looks like primitive geometry or common geometry, there's, there's probably a, a good tool for it. In this case, I'll do a slot that defines the center and the center and the width. So we can pick uh, one edge on the midpoint there. We're going to bring it down and come out. I know the width of the slot is a quarter inch. I'm not going to set the depth of the slot. This is actually going to be pretty useful. I want the depth of the slot to be the exact same depth as this pocket over here, but I can't see it. Uh, to see it on my sketch or to be able to reference it on my current sketch, what I can do is just select that geometry. And we're going to go ahead and um, I'm going to say P for project. And it's going to project that edge onto my current sketch. So now I saw the edge from behind there and I can use it and I can use one of these sketch relations, in this case, a tangent relationship to make that arc tangent to my bottom edge. And, and where that's useful is, again, now when the depth of that other pocket changes, it's going to follow and my intent is captured. So. We're using all the, the very basic tools here, but now we're going to cut this in uh, and maybe we'll just cut it up to that, that depth. And we've got our, our little groove. Two more features to go and our part's done. The last one is this uh, second to last one. Sorry, we're going to do the um, cut for 
uh, the slitting saw to slice through and then we'll put a chamfer on it. I'll use a sketch again. Uh, I'm going to use a center rectangle again. Uh, this might not be intuitive, but it, it works great for me. I used that origin that was centered. So you can see how useful it is for me to have that origin at the center of my component when this component's uh, so symmetrical and so many things are referenced off of it. For the height, I'll just snap it to one of these top edges. And for the width, um, this is going to be a 32nd of an inch slitting saw. So I'll just set a dimension on that, 1 divided by 32. And I want this connected to that edge. So I just held control to have those two pieces of geometry selected. And I'll say I want that coincident. I don't really care that there's extra sketch down at the bottom because what we're cutting, if it cuts too much, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we'll just go to the, the extrude command, select that shape that we want to actually cut. And we're going to cut it in um, to our um, to our geometry and, and chop that out. Oh, I should have gone a little farther though. There we go. Okay, so we've got the, the slit in there. Last feature, there's a chamfer on this edge. There's a special tool for doing chamfers. I'll just pick the chamfer feature, pick that edge, and drag that down. And I'm going to make that a 1 8 chamfer 0.125. There we go. That was pretty simple, about 10 minutes. We, we drew that part up. If, if I wasn't talking, it could have been a lot faster. Hopefully you're following along. And while you might not have got my clicks, I actually didn't want you to get my clicks. What I want you to understand is the process I went through so that you can try and repeat that process, not just following me blindly, um, but, but trying to get a sense of direction through the software. I, I think of the same thing when I'm using my Google Maps and I'm just following turn by turn. I completely lost my sense of direction, but Hopefully what I've done is given you a, a guide for how to get there and you can you can follow along uh, with this. So let's go ahead and hit save. Uh, I'm going to save this document and we're going to start the fun part. We're going to start the tool pathing part. OK, so we've, we've got the CAD model. Um, I think I said we were going to go on to the tool pathing part. Uh, I was wrong. I wanted to I wanted to do the drawing next. We'll do a quick drawing and, and then we're going to tool path the part. So I've got the I've got the part. Now I want to create some dimensions, create something I can print out and share with an end user. That's what a drawing is for. Um, we can go to the design workspace or the, the workspace switcher and say, I want to create a drawing from uh, this design. Uh, given the current design, I'm going to do it of the, the entire document uh, and I'm going to put it on some uh, 11 uh, by 8.5 or 8.5 by 11 paper. I, I, I like my drawings in landscape. So I'll say OK. And now what we're doing is creating a set of views that we want to represent uh, our component and set dimensions on it. And that, that's what a drawing is. It communicates to somebody how they're going to manufacture this. All we'll do is drop a view. Um, and we can say OK, and that's going to be our first base view. In this case, it's showing hidden lines. Um, if I want to just hide those lines, I'll just say just the visible edges, and I think that actually looks a little better. Uh, but we can't see everything we wanted to from this view, so what we can do is actually project another view. And maybe we'll go ahead and project a view off to the side. And I like to project an isometric view of the component as well. I think that makes a nice drawing. The last part that's that's missing, so I usually get my views first before I start to communicate um, the dimensions on the view. The last part is I really kind of want a section view here and see the depth of uh, this pocket. Or I, could, or I could show hidden lines, but I'm going to show you a section view. So let's do a section view, and we can um, create a section view through the middle of this component uh, that slices that in half. So now we even have a view that will show us the inside of that component uh, and what's going on there so we can see the depth of the pocket. Maybe I'll take this and I simply double clicked it and I'm going to shade that with edges. I think that's got a nice look to it. So in the drawing, we can now set, put a different number of dimensions on this drawing uh, to communicate how it's going to be made. I could set uh, the width. Um, I could pick two edges and set this dimension. 
um, and maybe I'm going to set the, the height of it. You'll notice when I'm setting a dimension like this, I find it best to place it in between the two views that it communicates, and that's just going to help uh, the person reading the drawing. They may look at one of those two views to get the information, so you're better off to place it uh, in a location that their eyes are going to see it quickly, uh, depending on if they looked at this view or the other view. Now, uh, this happens a lot, but when we're rounding to two decimal places, it's showing uh, 1.88. I know that that meant um, 1.875, 1 7 8 uh, And that communicates a tolerance. Uh, oftentimes, the tolerance is going to be based on the number of decimal places. Maybe I'll just show how we could change that. We can double click that dimension and set a tolerance a little bit higher. Or you could even do that for the entire document. Um, and the document settings are set over here on the, the left hand side. So maybe on the entire document, I would uh, decide that I want to change, uh, change the units. So here we could edit the units for the entire document and say the linear position is a few more decimal places. Uh, so you can either set that granular at an individual dimension, uh, dimension or, or on a document, uh, document size. I'm going to show a couple more tricks that I think might be useful if there's uh, somebody that knows uh, CAD CAM and is just watching this uh, to see some, some tricks on Fusion. Uh, one would be a whole callout. So because I use the whole command there, I can call that out specifically as the whole size. Uh, another thing that's pretty useful is when I'm picking on one of these edges that's broken, see how it's not a full circle because I've chopped into it. It's going to default to a radial dimension. But if I right click when I'm placing it, I could, I could view that as a, as a diameter, and then we're going to remember that setting for the next placement. So this is a, this is a drawing. We created some views. We added some dimensions. Um, we, we could keep going through adding all those dimensions, but uh, I, think, I think you get the point on a drawing. Uh, I'm excited to get onto a manufacturing document, so, so let's go ahead and uh, come back to our, our root design. And um, we'll walk you into to how we start creating a manufacturing document. And doing that, we're actually going to create an assembly as well.